Here are 50 most commonly asked interview questions, along with detailed answers of Salesforce governor limits for interviews. 1. What are Salesforce governor limits? Answer. Salesforce govern limits are runtime limits enforced by the Salesforce platform to ensure efficient resource utilization and maintain system performance. These limits apply to various aspects of the Salesforce platform, including Apex code, SQL queries, DML operations, and API requests. 2. What are the different types of governor limits in Salesforce? Answer. There are several types of governor limits in Salesforce, including limits on CPU usage, heap size, DML operations, SQL queries, callouts, email sends, and concurrent transactions. These limits are designed to prevent runaway processes, resource contention, and performance degradation. That could affect the stability and reliability of the Salesforce platform. 3. How do you check the current usage and remaining limits for governor limits in Salesforce? Answer. You can check the current usage and remaining limits for governor limits in Salesforce. Using system debug statements, the developer console, or the limits class in Apex code. The limits class provides methods such as getQtime, getHeapSize, and getQueries to retrieve information about specific limits. 4. What is the significance of Apex CPU time limit in Salesforce governor limits? Answer. Apex CPU time limit restricts the amount of CPU time that Apex code can consume during a single transaction. Exceeding this limit can result in Apex CPU time limit exceeded error, causing the transaction to fail and potentially impacting other transactions running in the same context. 5. How do you optimize Apex code to avoid hitting the CPU time limit? Answer. To optimize Apex code and avoid hitting the CPU time limit, you can implement best practices such as minimizing the use of loops, optimizing queries, reducing the number of DML operations, and avoiding inefficient or recursive algorithms. You can also use asynchronous processing techniques such as batch Apex, queueable Apex, and at future methods to offload CPU intensive tasks and improve performance. 6. What is the significance of heap size limit in Salesforce governor limits? Answer. The heap size limit restricts the amount of memory that Apex code can allocate during a single transaction. Exceeding this limit can result in Apex heap size limit exceeded error causing the transaction to fail and potentially impacting other transactions running in the same context. 7. How do you optimize Apex code to avoid hitting the heap size limit? Answer. To optimize Apex code and avoid hitting the heap size limit, you can minimize the use of large collections, reduce the size of objects stored in memory, and avoid unnecessary variable declarations. You can also use techniques such as lazy loading, pagination, and streaming to process large datasets in smaller chunks and reduce memory consumption. 8. What is the significance of SOQL query limit in Salesforce governor limits? Answer. The SOQL query limit restricts the number of SOQL queries that can be executed in a single transaction. Exceeding this limit can result in a too many SOQL queries error, causing the transaction to fail and potentially impacting other transactions running in the same context. 9. How do you optimize SOQL queries to avoid hitting the query limit? Answer. To optimize SOQL queries and avoid hitting the query limit, you can reduce the number of queries by combining related queries into fewer queries using relationships, subqueries, or aggregate functions. You can also use selective filtering criteria, limit the number of records, returned, and leverage query catching and indexing to improve query performance. 10. What is the significance of DML statement limit in Salesforce governor limits? Answer. Thedml statement limit restricts the number of database manipulation language DML. Statements such as insert, update, 
delete, and undelete operations that can be executed in a single transaction. Exceeding this limit can result in Apex CPU time limit exceeded error, causing the transaction to fail and potentially impacting other transactions running in the same context. 11. How do you optimize DML operations to avoid hitting the DML statement limit? Answer. To optimize DML operations and avoid hitting the DML statement limit, you can batch operations into smaller batches using techniques such as bulk API, batch apex, and database insert with a list of records. You can also use database triggers, workflow rules, and validation rules to enforce data integrity and reduce the need for manual DML operations. 12. What is the significance of callout limit in Salesforce governor limits? Answer. The callout limit restricts the number of external web service callouts that can be made in a single transaction. Exceeding this limit can result in a number of callouts in a single transaction exceeded error, causing the transaction to fail and potentially impacting other transactions running in the same context. 13. How do you optimize callouts to avoid hitting the callout limit? Answer. To optimize callouts and avoid hitting the callout limit, you can batch callouts into smaller batches. Use asynchronous processing techniques such as queuable apex and implement catching mechanisms to reuse callout responses. You can also prioritize callouts based on business criticality, implement retry mechanisms for transient errors, and monitor callout usage using system logs and monitoring tools. 14. What is the significance of email limit in Salesforce governor limits? Answer. Female limit restricts the number of outbound emails that can be sent from Salesforce in a single transaction. Exceeding this limit can result in a daily limit exceeded for sending emails error, causing the transaction to fail and potentially impacting other transactions running in the same context. 15. How do you optimize email sends to avoid hitting the email limit? Answer. To optimize email sends and avoid hitting the email limit, you can batch email sends into smaller batches. Use email templates and merge fields to personalize emails and implement email sending limits and monitoring. You can also use email preference settings and unsubscribe mechanisms to manage email communications and reduce the risk of exceeding limits. 16. What is the significance of concurrent transactions limit in Salesforce governor limits? Answer. The concurrent transactions limit restricts the number of simultaneous transactions that can be processed by the Salesforce platform. Exceeding this limit can result in performance degradation, resource contention, and potential impact on system stability and reliability. 17. How do you optimize concurrent transactions to avoid hitting the concurrent transactions limit? Answer. To optimize concurrent transactions and avoid hitting the concurrent transactions limit, you can implement asynchronous processing techniques such as batch apex, cubal apex, and platform events to offload processing from synchronous transactions. You can also use load testing and performance tuning to identify and address bottlenecks, optimize resource usage, and ensure scalability and reliability. 18. What are the considerations for designing scalable and efficient Apex code to avoid hitting governor limits? Answer. Considerations for designing scalable and efficient Apex code to avoid hitting governor limits. Include understanding and adhering to governor limits, implementing best practices for code optimization, and leveraging asynchronous processing techniques. You should also monitor and analyze code performance, identify and address performance bottlenecks, and prioritize critical business processes to optimize resource allocation. 19. How do you handle exceptions and errors caused by governor limits in Apex code? And what are the best practices for error handling and recovery? Answer. To handle exceptions and errors caused by governor limits in Apex code, you can implement error handling and recovery mechanisms using try-catch blocks, exception handling, and fault paths. 
Best practices for error handling include providing meaningful error messages, logging errors for troubleshooting, and implementing retry mechanisms or fallback options when possible. 20. What tools and techniques do you use to monitor and analyze governor limits, usage in Salesforce orgs, and how do you proactively manage governor limits? Answer. To monitor and analyze governor limits usage in Salesforce orgs, you can use system logs, debug logs, Apex debuggers, and monitoring tools such as Salesforce Inspector, Workbench, and Salesforce Event Monitoring. Proactive management of governor limits involves regular performance tuning, capacity planning, and optimization of resource usage to prevent hitting limits and ensure optimal system performance and reliability. 21. What are the considerations for designing efficient SOQL queries to avoid hitting governor limits? Answer. Considerations for designing efficient SOQL queries include limiting the number of fields retrieved, using selective filtering criteria, leveraging relationships and subqueries, and optimizing query performance using indexes and query plans. You should also avoid nested queries, large result sets, and unnecessary sorting or aggregation operations to minimize query execution time and resource consumption. 22. How do you handle bulk data processing in Apex to avoid hitting governor limits, and what are the best practices for bulkification? Answer. To handle bulk data processing in Apex and avoid hitting governor limits, you can implement bulk processing techniques such as bulk API, batch, Apex, and database methods with lists of records. Best practices for bulkification include processing data in batches, using collections to group records, and optimizing code for bulk operations to minimize resource usage and improve performance. 23. What are the implications of hitting governor limits in production environments? And how do you mitigate the impact on users and system performance? Answer. Hitting governor limits in production environments can lead to transaction failures, performance degradation, and potential impact on user experience and productivity. To mitigate the impact, you can implement error handling and recovery mechanisms, monitor system performance, and optimize resource usage to prevent hitting limits proactively. 24. How do you design and implement retry mechanisms for handling transient errors caused by governor limits in Salesforce integrations and callouts? Answer. To design and implement retry mechanisms for handling transient errors caused by governor limits in Salesforce integrations and callouts. You can use techniques such as exponential backoff, jitter, and circuit breaker patterns. You should also implement error handling and recovery logic to detect and retry failed operations with configurable retry limits and intervals to avoid excessive retries and resource consumption. 25. What are the best practices for designing scalable and efficient data models in Salesforce to minimize the risk of hitting governor limits? Answer. Best practices for designing scalable and efficient data models in Salesforce include understanding data relationships and cardinality, normalizing and denormalizing data as needed, and optimizing record access and sharing settings. You should also consider data volume performance implications, and governor limits, when designing data models to ensure scalability, reliability, and maintainability. 26. How do you manage asynchronous processing in Salesforce to optimize resource usage and avoid hitting governor limits? Answer. To manage asynchronous processing in Salesforce and optimize resource usage, you can use techniques such as batch, apex, queuable apex, and platform events to offload processing from synchronous transactions. You should also monitor asynchronous job queues, prioritize critical tasks, and implement retry mechanisms and error handling to ensure reliable and efficient processing. 27. What are the implications of hitting concurrent transactions limit in Salesforce? 
And how do you scale and optimize system architecture to handle concurrent usage? Answer. Hitting concurrent transactions limit in Salesforce can lead to performance degradation, resource contention, and potential impact on system stability and reliability. To scale and optimize system architecture, you can implement techniques such as horizontal and vertical scaling load balancing, catching, and partitioning to distribute workload and improve throughput. 28. How do you leverage platform events and change data capture CDC in Salesforce to implement event driven architecture and minimize reliance on synchronous processing? Answer. Platformance and change data capture CDC in Salesforce allow you to implement event driven architecture and decouple systems by asynchronously transmitting and processing events. By leveraging these features, you can reduce reliance on synchronous processing, minimize resource contention, and improve scalability and reliability. 29. What are the considerations for designing efficient APEX? Triggers to avoid hitting governor limits, and how do you implement trigger best practices? Answer. Considerations for designing efficient APEX triggers include limiting trigger logic, bulkifying trigger operations, and avoiding recursive triggers and unnecessary processing. You can implement trigger best practices such as trigger handler patterns, separation of concerns, and trigger frameworks to organize and optimize trigger logic and minimize the risk of hitting governor limits. 30. How do you monitor and analyze governor limits usage in Salesforce orgs? And what are the key metrics and indicators to track for proactive management? Answer. To monitor and analyze governor limits usage in Salesforce orgs, you can use tools such as system logs, debug logs, Salesforce inspector, and monitoring dashboards. Key metrics and indicators to track for proactive management include CPU time usage, heap size consumption, DML operations, SOQL, queries, callouts, and email sends, as well as trends over time and potential areas for optimization. 31. How do you optimize Visual Force pages and lightning components to avoid hitting governor limits related to view state and rendering performance? Answer. To optimize Visual Force pages and lightning components, you can minimize the use of view state by using partial page refresh lazy loading, and client-side caching. You should also optimize component rendering by reducing the number of components, minimizing DOM manipulation, and leveraging server-side caching and caching mechanisms. 32. What are the implications of hitting email limit in Salesforce, and how do you manage and monitor email usage to prevent exceeding limits? Answer. Hitting mail limit in Salesforce can lead to transaction failures, delayed email deliveries, and potential impact on user communication and productivity. To manage and monitor email usage, you can implement email governance policies, monitor email delivery status, and use email logging and monitoring tools to track usage and identify potential issues. 33. How do you handle long-running transactions and batch processing in Salesforce to avoid hitting governor limits related to CPU time and transaction duration? Answer. To handle long-running transactions and batch processing, you can use techniques such as asynchronous processing, parallel processing, and batch processing to break down large tasks into smaller chunks and distribute workload. You should also optimize code execution, implement efficient algorithms, and monitor transaction duration to prevent hitting CPU time and transaction duration limits. 34. What are the considerations for designing efficient workflows and automation rules in Salesforce to minimize the risk of hitting governor limits? Answer. Considerations for designing efficient workflows and automation rules include limiting the number of rules, evaluating rule criteria and actions, and optimizing workflow actions and field updates. You should also consider workflow evaluation criteria, rule dependencies, and potential impact. 
on system performance and scalability when designing workflows and automation rules. 35. How do you optimize database schema design and indexing in Salesforce to improve query performance and minimize the risk of hitting governor limits related to SOQL queries? Answer. To optimize database schema design and indexing, you can normalize and denormalize data as needed. Create custom indexes for frequently queried fields and optimize query filters and sorting criteria. You should also monitor query performance, analyze query plans, and use tools such as Query Plan Tool and Query Plan Analyzer to identify and optimize inefficient queries. 36. What are the implications of hitting CPU time limit in Salesforce? And how do you profile and optimize Apex code to prevent excessive CPU usage? Answer. Hitting CPU time limit in Salesforce can lead to transaction failures, performance degradation, and potential impact on system stability and reliability. To profile and optimize Apex code, you can use tools such as Developer Console, Apex Profiling, and Apex Replay Debugger to identify CPU intensive operations, optimize code execution, and reduce CPU usage. 37. How do you optimize data access and sharing in Salesforce to minimize the risk of hitting governor limits related to record access and sharing calculations? Answer. To optimize data access and sharing, you can simplify and streamline sharing rules, permission sets, and role hierarchy to reduce the complexity of record access calculations. You should also monitor record access performance, analyze sharing rules and use tools such as Security Health Check and Sharing Rule Analyzer to identify and optimize sharing calculations. 38. What are the implications of hitting DML statement limit in Salesforce? And how do you design and implement efficient data manipulation strategies to avoid hitting limits? Answer. Hitting null statement limit in Salesforce can lead to transaction failures. Data inconsistency and potential impact on data integrity and reliability. To design and implement efficient data manipulation strategies, you can use bulk processing techniques, implement error handling and recovery logic, and optimize DML operations to minimize resource usage and improve performance. 39. How do you optimize data migration and data loading processes in Salesforce to minimize the risk? of hitting governor limits related to data import and export operations? Answer. To optimize data migration and data loading processes, you can use data loader tools such as Salesforce Data Loader, Data Import Wizard, and Bulk API to batch and parallelize data loading. You should also optimize data transformation and validation logic, monitor data loading performance, and use techniques such as batch processing and error handling to prevent hitting limits and ensure data integrity. 40. What are the implications of hitting concurrent transactions limit in Salesforce? And how do you scale and optimize system architecture to handle concurrent usage? Answer. Hitting concurrent transactions limit in Salesforce can lead to performance degradation, resource contention, and potential impact on system stability and reliability. To scale and optimize system architecture, you can implement techniques such as horizontal and vertical scaling load balancing, catching, and partitioning to distribute workload and improve throughput. 41. How do you handle exceptions and errors caused by governor limits in asynchronous Apex code? such as Batch Apex and Cubal Apex, and what are the best practices for error handling? Answer. To handle exceptions and errors caused by governor limits in asynchronous Apex code, you can implement error handling and recovery logic using try-catch blocks and exception handling. Best practices for error handling include providing meaningful error messages, logging errors for troubleshooting, and implementing retry mechanisms or fallback options when possible. 42. What are the implications of hitting callout limits in Salesforce? 
And how do you optimize callout usage to avoid exceeding limits? Answer, hitting callout limits in Salesforce can lead to transaction failures, delayed integration processes, and potential impact on system integration and functionality. To optimize callout usage, you can batch callouts into smaller batches. Use asynchronous processing techniques such as Queueable, Apex, and implement catching mechanisms to reuse callout responses and minimize resource consumption. 43. How do you optimize SOQL queries to avoid hitting governor limits related to query rows and query rows? Retrieved? Answer. To optimize SOQL queries, you can limit the number of fields retrieved. Use selective filtering criteria and leverage relationships and subqueries to reduce the number of records returned. You should also consider query optimization techniques such as query plan analysis, indexing, and query cache management to improve query performance and minimize the risk of hitting query row limits. 44. What are the implications of hitting heap size limits in Salesforce? And how do you optimize memory usage to avoid exceeding limits? Answer. Hitting heap size limits in Salesforce can lead to transaction failures, memory leaks, and potential impact on system stability and reliability. To optimize memory usage, you can minimize the use of large collections, reduce the size of objects stored in memory, and avoid unnecessary variable declarations and memory-intensive operations. 45. How do you design and implement efficient test classes for Apex code to avoid hitting governor limits related to test coverage and test execution time? Answer. To design and implement efficient test classes for Apex code, you can focus on testing critical functionality, minimizing setup and teardown operations, and using test data factories and mock objects to reduce data creation overhead. You should also prioritize test coverage for key use cases, optimize test execution order, and leverage asynchronous testing techniques such as Kubel Apex for long-running tests. 46. What are the considerations for designing efficient Apex? Triggers to avoid hitting governor limits related to trigger execution and recursion. Answer. Considerations for designing efficient Apex triggers include limiting trigger logic, bulkifying trigger operations, and avoiding recursive triggers and unnecessary processing. You can implement trigger best practices such as trigger handler patterns, separation of concerns, and trigger frameworks to organize and optimize trigger logic, and minimize the risk of hitting trigger execution and recursion limits. 47. How do you monitor and analyze Apex code performance to identify potential performance bottlenecks and optimize resource usage? Answer. To monitor and analyze Apex code performance, you can use tools such as Developer Console, Apex Profiling, and Salesforce Optimizer to identify CPU intensive operations, inefficient queries, and resource usage patterns. You should also analyze code execution times, CPU consumption, and heap size usage to identify potential performance bottlenecks and optimize resource usage for better scalability and reliability. 48. What are the implications of hitting transaction limit in Salesforce? And how do you optimize transaction management to avoid exceeding limits? Answer. Hitting transaction limits in Salesforce can lead to transaction failures, data inconsistency, and potential impact on data integrity and reliability. To optimize transaction management, you can minimize transaction size, reduce the number of operations per transaction, and use asynchronous processing techniques such as Kubel Apex to offload processing from synchronous transactions. 49. How do you manage and monitor platform usage and license limits in Salesforce to ensure compliance and prevent overage charges? Answer. To manage and monitor platform usage and license limits. In Salesforce, you can use tools such as Salesforce Usage Analytics, Salesforce Optimizer, and License Management App to track user activity, monitor license usage, 
and identify potential compliance issues. You should also implement governance policies, enforce license allocations, and regularly review usage metrics to optimize resource allocation and prevent overage charges. 50. What are the implications of hitting limit in Salesforce sandbox environments? And how do you optimize sandbox usage to avoid exceeding limits? Answer. Hitting limits in Salesforce sandbox environments can lead to delays in development and testing, disruption of sandbox refresh, and deployment processes and potential impact on project timelines and delivery. To optimize sandbox usage, you can implement sandbox governance policies, monitor sandbox limits and usage, and use techniques such as data masking and selective data loading to reduce data volume and minimize resource consumption. In conclusion, understanding and effectively managing Salesforce governor limits are crucial for ensuring the optimal performance and reliability of Salesforce implementations. By implementing best practices, optimizing code, and monitoring usage, organizations can mitigate the risk of hitting limits and avoid potential disruptions to business processes. Additionally, proactive management of governor limits enables scalability, enhances user experience, and promotes the successful adoption of Salesforce technologies. For more exciting tips, tricks and more importantly, for valuable insights of interviews, please share, like, and subscribe to my channel. It has a lot of valuable information about various insights of interviews. It has a wide range of real-world portfolio projects of various technologies for interviews, and it has wide range of most asked interview questions and answers of various technologies like data science, SAP, AWS, DevOps, and full-stack web development, and more. That will be useful during interviews. It has a wide range of most asked interview questions and answers, and real-world portfolio projects of various technologies for freshers. For two to three years, experienced candidates, and for five or above years, experienced candidates to test their skills by knowing most asked interview questions and make themselves ready for interviews.